So this is day two of our little hospital odyssey. How you going, Luca? Do you know where you're going? Yeah. <laughs> Today's day three. Get my right? outfit. Yeah, I will. Why don't you tell us about today? Today I, is day three. What? Today I may take a shower. Hopefully. You, today you may <laughs> take a shower. Can't go outside, but I'm looking at the view. So. Feels a little bit. We were dressed for the great outdoors. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we were keeping the sunglasses to for the glare. You're actually helping a lot. I've been combing out little by little, which is why we have the two braids on the side. It, it, and then with this back, I think I'm gonna just have to get in the shower. We've got some peroxide shampoo, they say. That my mom had the concern of like me literally needing to go into brain surgery. Hi, what's up you guys? It's Luca, welcome back to my channel. Today I, Whew, I'm kind of filming a video that is really hard for me. Yeah, I usually am excited to film videos and this just feels so weird like because it's just so like personal and it's really changed my life, the way I view life. So I really have been putting this off once I've been thinking about it. Like I've been wanting to share my story and give you guys like an in insight on what's been going on in my life. Of course, it's so important to me to always like have you guys updated. It's just like when something like this happens in your life, it is so much harder to talk about than you might think. And even just to tell my friends, like I feel like one can never like truly grasp what happened to me as well as like me or one of my family members. So I'm just scared that like, I don't know, someone will like misunderstand the situation. But I, yeah, I just wanna let you know that this is, will be very real and raw. And I never thought this something like this crazy would happen to me and it just goes to show you that like things that you may not have ever imagined may happen to you in your life but you just gotta accept them for what they are and know that they're making you stronger and more recently I have been forced to go deeper within myself and just really like love myself for how much I've been through just like processing my emotions and everything and being surrounded with people I love but at the same time taking time up for myself so without further ado I just want to get on into the video because you guys are probably waiting. It all started out when I, I don't know why I'm so nervous to say this. Um, I usually have no problem being like candid on my channel, but as you guys know, I got my wisdom teeth pulled at the beginning of October. <laughs> Sorry, time has not been moving the same way as it used to. <laughs> so forgive me, but yes, the beginning of October. October. I know different people have different experiences, but in my personal case, it was pretty hard to recover from. I was on a few drugs um, that I was prescribed, of course, and I just experienced a lot of pain and one drug that I was taking to help me fall asleep at night because I am a very active person. I am always working. I'm always doing something. I'm always keeping myself occupied. I don't know. It's just like my weird something like a tick inside me is like, okay, Luca, you gotta be doing something. Like watching Netflix for me is like painful almost. Does that make sense? Like I just super type A. That's how my parents are too. So I would get super occupied during the day and then all of a sudden at night I would just get this horrendous pain where my wisdom teeth were taken out. And it was to the point where I was needing to take pain pills like 
oxycodone. Those didn't have an effect on me, but I was taking this muscle relaxer. Basically, it basically just relaxes the jaw muscles because, correct me if I'm wrong, I know I'm not a doctor as we know. I'm learning a lot about, I guess, biology you could say, or but I've learned a lot about that, so sorry if I struggle to find the correct words or anything like that. I know I'm talking to teenagers for the most part who probably don't know a ton about the correct terms for all of this too, so I was taking this muscle relaxer and I don't I'm gonna say the name of it because I don't wanna get hashtag sued. As I was taking this, it helped me to fall asleep and it was about a couple weeks went by and I had been kind of getting back into the groove of things, starting to work out again, kind of feeling better. My mouth wasn't in pain 24 seven. So I was like, all right, we're making progress. So I kind of stopped taking all of the medications that I was on. I was starting to come off of this particular muscle relaxer drug. I could not sleep at all. It was very abnormal for me because I probably have never had an all-nighter until this night. I'm super like, I need my beauty sleep. Like I was always that girl in sleepovers who like had to get up for gymnastics in the morning. Something inside me was just like, no Luca, sleep is just not an option tonight. Like we don't need sleep. Like who is she? Sleep is for the week. Girl, I had been listening to probably all the meditations on YouTube. Nothing was working. I falling asleep was not an option. So what did I do? I started making TikToks, which if you would like to see a personal evidence of this night, I actually posted a TikTok that was so real. Like it was funny, but it also was funny because it was actual, actually real. And it was the one where it's just like, good morning, America. I'm not going to explain it because that's really cringy, but you'll find it if you go on my TikTok account. I was like, you know what? We're going to be productive. It's maybe 5 a.m. at this point. I start doing my psychology homework. I'm just like up and ready to go. <laughs> Let's get work done. But finally, the sun was rising. I had gotten a total of zero hours of sleep. And what do I do? I get up and I go to the freaking park. That, okay, that's actually kind of normal for me because I love the park, but I just enjoy the sunrise. Me and my no sleep. I don't think I brushed my hair. I was still in my pajamas. People were looking at me kind of funny and I was just like up like this watching the freaking sunrise. I was like, life is so great. Like the ocean from the bayfront. And so at this point I was like, you know what? I feel fine. I'm ready to go. Let's go to the gym, baby. Let's grind it out. Have a workout session. Got my matcha. I was ready to go. I went to the gym. I freaking was a beast. I lifted the same amount that I normally do. Like I was on something else. We'll, we'll get to the point really soon. This all has correlation with the story. So bear with me. I probably in retrospect should have taken care of myself and not maybe like lifted really heavy weights that day. <sighs> I'm just, I'm like that. I had this very scary encounter with, uh, uh this is hard for me to say, but I've had a stalker at the gym. And I had a very scary encounter with this particular person. I am not gonna go too much into it, but I was bawling my eyes out. Everyone at the gym was like asking me if I'm okay. The whole staff was like really concerned for me because they didn't really know what was going on. But I'd been talking to the manager about this incident and basically I could not stop crying for the whole entire morning. I was so in shock. I was so deep sleep deprived. Let me just remind you that the main reason I was sleep deprived and having these really weird not wanting to go to sleep tendencies is because of the muscle relaxer I was taking I was coming off of that drug <sighs> my mom was like really concerned because I could not stop bawling like I was so shook to the core and I wasn't really able to like talk about what happened because it was so like traumatic for me I guess and so my mom knew one thing and that she knew that I couldn't drive and it would just not be a good idea because I was in such a poor emotional state so she drove me to class I can just remember in the class me just being completely dazed like everything was just so good like I was really high off of no sleep like that's the only way I could put it like I was just like I had no idea what was going on I really couldn't pay attention but I was just like wow what do you want to be when you grow up like I was literally saying that to people I was like having these like really deep combos I was just like yeah well I think that's so great that like you want to be a teacher literally pouring my heart out to everyone which is definitely a Luca tendency but not to that extent so like people were asking me if I was like okay because my eyes were super red because I've been crying but I'm just not that type of person to, like bring that on into other people like I just love talking to people so one guy just like really can like ask me if I was okay like because I was like, yeah, I didn't sleep at all <laughs> last night, but I'm like fine, you know And I was just like laughing to myself and he was just like he just could not understand me and I don't blame him I could I can't understand me either, but fast 
forwarding to after the psychology class my thoughts get very disorganized as my mom calls it i was having really scary thoughts so i was just going about my night life normally but for the most part i'm a pretty content person with life but i can just remember having these like super like scary thoughts like i was having so much anxiety to the point where i didn't know how to escape it i've experienced like stress and like a little bit of anxiety here and there but i just never have struggled to this maximum where i like actually didn't know how to deal with it like i was trying to like get help from my parents but i didn't know how to like tell them what i was thinking because it was all very confusing for me at the same time it, it's this part's a little blurry because I think at this part I was so sleep deprived and showing signs of the withdrawal from this drug again this is all drawing back to this particular drug why I was acting this way and I'll get to that later on in the video but this is just very hard for me to say because I have never thought of like self-harm by any means but there was like this voice inside of my head that was just like Luca like do this like like this very like haunting not me definitely not like my average thoughts very dark i wasn't even aware of the fact that i was having anxiety it just felt like my heart was beating so fast and i was just like inside watching it the voice i was like listening to it i didn't really like i was so confused my heart was beating so fast i kept telling my mom that i thought i was gonna get a heart attack which is not really i don't know i don't want to say it's not possible for like someone my age but she just was not concerned she was so confused and i'm really close to my parents so they were really confused why i was acting this way they were, they thought i was joking but I really was like serious of the things I was telling them and they just didn't really know how to respond I guess so that night was having a lot of like scary thoughts trying to fall asleep and how to get some water here where was I <laughs> Okay, um, Grayson, come here. I need some support right now. I cannot tell you how much an emotional support my dog has been giving me. And I needed my mom to come sleep with me. This is, this never happens, but I was so scared to fall asleep that, Grayson, stay. I need you. Please stay. <laughs> I need her to come sleep in my bed with me because I was terrified of my fear of getting kidnapped. So I was trying to fall asleep and I can remember closing my eyes and I was so like out of it that I, uh, I was just like a black spiral. So I was in this very like hallucinative state where I was not getting REM sleep at all, but I kept having these night terrors and it was to the point where like my cat jumped on the bed and I was so screaming out of my mind like i don't particularly remember screaming at all but i can remember being terrified to fall asleep and just like sleep really scared me i felt like i was not safe i kept screaming and waking up and i had such a bad night terror that i threw myself off of the bed this is a little bit of a foreshadow to a day later but i threw myself off of the bed i may have hit my head there's no way of knowing because my mom was sleeping but I, I woke her up the only thing i remember is my arm hurting so bad nothing about like me hitting my head but it's possible that I did and I have concrete floors that is another thing to keep in mind my house is like very modern so we have literally have concrete floors so I woke up my arm was like I I literally told my mom I was like mom did I broke break my arm because I couldn't lay on it it was like so stiff it was like tingling like so much pain and she was like, Luca, you fell off your bed and you probably landed on your arm. And I was like, oh, okay. And I just remember being so scared to the point where like I had to touch my mom to like make sure that she was there like in bed with me. I had class in the morning and in retrospect, it probably would have been a good idea to have not gone, but I really didn't think much was wrong with me. You just gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. And even if you're not feeling 100%, you just gotta carry about your normal life. So even though I literally had night terrors the whole entire night, sleep paralysis, all of that so REM sleep was not in the picture I guess you could say I was very delirious and I remember driving in my car like literally not thinking which is very dangerous but just letting like my mind like carry me to class because I was like a little bit like a robot like I wasn't in my normal thought state I had no idea so I went to class and I had a marketing class and things were just not adding up in my mental state like I was perceiving a lot of things in a very weird way people were like looking at me and I'm like I didn't know why but I probably didn't look too hot let's be honest so I went to my coffee shop but I was feeling really nauseous and so for some reason I decided and go to this 
Oh, did I mention it was Halloween? That makes it even more <laughs> spooky. Like, I try to make jokes to lighten up the mood, but like I really just can't because it's like really serious. And I can remember like the noises. Everything around me was so sensitive. Like after I ordered my smoothie, I was like trying to focus. I literally could not focus on doing any work. The noises, like the music in the room was so loud. There are so many opportunities in this moment because I was in a weird hallucinative state that I probably could have gotten like hurt. Or when you're like, when you're not self-aware like I was <sighs> scary but this is why I believe that I could have actually got a concussion falling off of my bed that night because of these weird symptoms I was showing I felt nauseous every time I wanted to eat I was to the point where I just like could not go to class so I called up my mom I was like hey mom like I need to come home this is not working so I did and at that point I don't mean to get like too spiritual about this but I can just remember this voice in my head just saying like like push through Luca like you're gonna be fine. Um, like, ah. I truly believe that there was like something higher trying to like watch out for me and like I don't know how I got home that day because I literally was I didn't know where I was going like I can just remember something like my intuition or maybe it was something higher than me like leading me home because I was not like aware of me driving and like I could have gotten in a car accident or like something really bad because I can remember just driving and being like I have no idea where I'm going right now but like something inside of me was just like make a turn here like make a turn here but I was like going the wrong way if that makes sense like I would make weird turns at weird places I somehow got home I didn't really think about this until this moment and I was acting so like not myself to the point where my parents were like really concerned and at this point it was a number of things um sleep deprivation definitely being a pretty key factor and the drugs that i was coming off of so i was going about my normal life but this is where like the anxiety it was like kind of late afternoon it was the part part where my anxiety was getting terrible felt like I was gonna have a heart attack trying to tell my parents didn't know how to tell them they didn't know how to act like I felt all the pain in the world and I had no idea why I was feeling this and it was like something that I wanted to escape but like couldn't and so my parent my mom actually had to go on a she had a little night planned with her client so she normally my parents are with me like a lot but my parents had to go to this thing that they had planned because it was very important to my mom and she didn't want to miss it so but she knew I was not acting normal and so she called up my aunt who I'm also very close to she drove down from where she lives which is about an hour hour and a half away so that was a pretty big deal so I just want to thank her for driving down and being with me because if I didn't have her then a the story could I honestly don't know what would have happened <sighs> I was so nauseous at this point I just do not feel like myself. I feel like I'm a broken record, but this is just how I felt. Me and my aunt were listening to, she got this like meditation because at this point, I think everyone knew that I needed sleep because I wasn't getting it at all. <laughs> um, and so she was, had this meditation on her phone and I can remember like sounds being so sensitive. Like I don't know how to describe it, but like everything I heard was like 10 times louder. We were listening to meditation. I was like hallucinating at this point where I really didn't know like reality. Like I was not in touch with reality at all. I was kind of in like this hallucinating world. <sighs> my aunt, I was laying in my bed and I literally could not like, I was refusing to fall asleep. Like my body was refusing to fall asleep even though I needed it so bad. So my aunt left the room for um, a minute, she'd been with me the whole time. And I literally don't know what brought me up to this moment. Um, a lot of things, clearly. I wasn't in my right mindset, but something told me to, this is gonna sound crazy, so bear with me, but this is actually what happened. Stand on top of my bed and fall backwards. And that is what I did. I was standing, oh, like facing this way and it, I have like a hallway if you guys know what my room looks like and I fell directly on my head and I just remember like I'm gonna pay attention to the little beach I put on the background <laughs> but I remember my head was like I heard the sound that was just like boom. my aunt walked in the room and she saw blood all over the floor my head had cracked open. Don't know if that's the correct medical term, but my head was bleeding. 
don't remember feeling any pain. I was in such a weird place that I really didn't know what happened to me and I was fine. Like I thought I was fine and my aunt was freaking out. I can remember her just like coming into the room and think and saying like, Luca, like what happened? Like so like I feel so bad for her because for anyone to see like me like on the floor with my head bleeding, if she wouldn't have been there, I don't think I could have gotten myself help. She was trying to get me dressed, I guess, because I was in my sleeping clothes. I didn't really know what was happening again. So my parents came home, they rushed me into the back seat of my car. I was just driven to the hospital. Luckily, there's one that's like seven, eight minutes away. So not too far of a drive, which was a blessing. And I was not complying with anyone. If anyone touched me, I would be like, why are you touching me? Like, stop, like I'm fine. And again, I would not do that if someone was trying to take care of me. Like that's really rude. But again, this was not Luca. I was on the, a wheelchair because my mom, I wouldn't get out of the car. I was like refusing. And so she had to wheel me into the hospital and the whole waiting room was just looking at me. I was like saying weird stuff. I was shouting. I was lit like, this was a psychotic break. Not something I ever thought I would say I would have because I have never shown any troubling mental health issues. I never have struggled with that in my life. So yeah, um, they were obviously could see that I needed immediate care and I was not letting anyone touch me. I was, I do remember this really vividly, sadly, because it just does not seem like myself who was acting in this way, but they were trying to get me into this room to put me on a gurney to give me to see what was wrong with my head because it was bleeding. And I had this huge like gash in the back of my head. I had a police officer in the room with me because I was not, I was like making, I was making fun of people. I was like, why are you touching me? Like, get off of me. Like, I'm fine. Like, seriously, like, I thought I was completely okay, which is the scariest part. I was resisting treatment, so they had to put me to sleep, and that was in my best interest. So I was just like, I want to go down the floor. Like, I want to sit on the floor. I can, this is like the last memory I had before they put me to sleep. And then finally, someone was like, should we, like, should we do it to her or something like that? Like, and then that was it. I don't remember anything else. So if I didn't have a a head injury then it would be very probable that they would have taken me to a mental institution to try to figure out why I was acting this way and so the doctor had to put 10 staples in the back of my head and from this point they took me to the ICU unit which is if you're not familiar in America it is like the highest level of care that you can get people who have gunshot wounds to their head go here it is family was probably so scared out of their minds at this point I slept for around 16 hours in the ICU unit. My blood was getting drawn. They were doing constant like concussion tests, I want to say, or they were like trying to, they, I can remember this one question. They were like, what year is it? What's the president? What's your name? When's your birthday? They were constantly asking me this, but I was like, I wanted to sleep because I was sleep deprived. They couldn't really medically assess me like mentally, I guess, because I wasn't in the right mindset. I was very sleepy. And so they were taking me in and out of CAT scans. I want to say that I had around like four or five CAT scans because they wanted to check up on the brain bleed because my two frontal lobes were bleeding. Brain bleeds are really scary because you hit like the wrong, like not wrong, if you hit a part of your brain that is detrimental, then you can have like long-term effects with your brain, like memory loss, brain sur- I could have had to add brain surgery. And they were constantly checking up on the bleeding in the frontal lobes of my head to make sure that it was stable. Thursday, I'd been admitted, which was Halloween. Friday, I'd slept the whole entire day, throughout the night a little bit, woke up a little bit here and there. This is like a really freaking terrifying experience because I couldn't walk. I was being gurneyed everywhere. I was half awake, half asleep, didn't really know what was going on. I can remember vividly, and I'm gonna introduce you to a term you probably haven't heard before. It's called bedpan. And this is something that they put underneath you when you can't get up to go pee. It is so fun. Peeing lying down is not the most natural thing. So I couldn't go 
in the bedpan. So they had to, I had to get a catheter. Not an experience I would really recommend for anyone. So I had to get that, I think three times. That hurt a lot. I can remember one day I was like, it was Saturday morning. I, my dad got me breakfast from First Watch, such a good dad. And I was kind of feeling like eating. I was kind of getting back, getting awake. The psychiatrist, a psychiatrist came in to give me another test and I finally been to the point in the state where they could medically assess my mental awareness at that point but also I thought I would mention this is also kind of a key part in the story that I was Baker acted which here in Florida is when someone is harmed to their themselves and others so I was put on the Baker act and I think you have to stay in the hospital for a total of I, want, I don't know how exactly how many hours but like you have to be under medical care so there was always someone in my hospital room like a nurse with me at all times I was never left alone they're constantly giving me IV fluids. They were constantly like keeping me stable, checking my brain bleed in and out. I remember I had to get a CT scan where it's like this big scary machine. I was like listening to classical music to like try to keep me calm because it's very loud. I really didn't know what was going on. Can you imagine being in my own shoes? Like I had no idea what was go going on and like I had some clue but like not a lot and so the nurses finally were ready to release me from the ICU unit. I should probably mention before it gets confusing, my aunt was looking up side effects of this certain muscle relaxant that I was coming off of. There was a forum online and a lot of people had been saying how it gave them really bad side effects. Again, this isn't very common for the drug, but there were people online saying, hey, like I had a bad effect, I was hallucinating. So I had been released to the a lower unit that was not as intensive of care. I just started walking. I can remember the first time I walked was because I needed to go to the bathroom and I was like, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready for this voyage to the bathroom, <laughs> which was right beside, like the toilet was like right beside me. So I peed by myself. Catheters, like not to give you too much information, but catheters like really do give you pain in your bladder so I was experiencing like a lot of pain from that a lot of pain like in my head I was having migraines like I didn't like a lot of light people couldn't talk too loud or else it would hurt like very bad migraines basically I had these ba like sitters in my room who are basically people there to make sure that I am okay some sitters were amazing some sitters one sitter in particular was a little bit difficult to work to work with even though she was doing her job but I just remember I was like trying I wanted to go to the gosh freaking dang bathroom with some peace and quiet and again I mentioned I'm pee shy I don't like peeing in front of other people most of the sitters have been giving me pri have been giving me privacy and again I was on the Baker Act so this technically was her job to make sure that I was like not in the bathroom doing anything that would be of harm to myself but I can remember I just wanted the door closed I just doors cracked open like this couldn't tell if she was watching me she may have been watching me but i was just like miss could i please have some privacy like could you please shut the door like i was i knew what was going on so i was like i'm not gonna hurt myself in here like i just want to pee and then she started going off she was like no you're under the baker act blah 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 blah, blah. like not talking to me as a human like i just want some peace and quiet like can you just can you just close the door a little bit for like one second so I can just go to the bathroom. She finally got the, the memo that I was really uncomfortable and so she closed the door and, and it just means the world to me when people are actually nice and like nurses at the hospital or like the police officer that was in the room with me that night when they like treated me like a human and knew that I wasn't doing well instead of just someone who they needed to like watch over to make sure I didn't hurt myself. I wasn't on my phone. I wasn't in contact with any one of my friends because you're not supposed to be on phone when you have a concussion especially a head injury as bad as I did like I was literally laying in the hospital bed all day like with the blinds shut there was like no night and day all the days ran into each other so Saturday night was a little better I was sleeping normally and they had to come in and I remember just trying to sleep in my little hospital bed and the nurses came in and they had to take my blood and at this point I just like could care less I was like take my 
arm, draw the blood, I don't care, life means nothing anymore. <laughs> I think that's really what makes like a person tough is like when your only option is to be tough. I slept pretty good that night. My dad came in, gave me some more first wash. Thank you, father. <laughs> Thank you, dad, for bringing me good food instead of me having to eat hospital food. Again, I was surrounded by my whole entire family this whole time, which really made a big difference because they were all staying so strong for me. And I think that's one of the reasons why I was able to stay really strong was because my, my family wasn't getting emotional or like crying. When you're in need of like, strength, it's so helpful when the people around you are being strong too. So just a quick thank you for my family members for just being there for me and not, not acting like something major was going on. Even though something major was going on, it just helped me keep my sanity, I guess. And I really didn't know the severity of the situation at that point and that my mom had the concern of like me literally needing to go into brain surgery or like fearing for my life. And I'm so grateful that I'm alive here today. I was feeling a tad bit better, not a lot, though so we were waiting for the psychiatrist to come and give me a checkup because the doctors had all signed off on me being released because I was under the Baker Act and I think the Baker Act needs to run its full course and so I really didn't want to my family did not want to have me in the hospital that night because at that point I was being compliant and I there was no need like before there was a really like I needed to be in the hospital of course like I needed IVs my parents didn't know how to take care of me my family had no idea how to treat me but Sunday it was kind of like all right so we're in the hospital like we really don't need her to stay the night which is what my mom was thinking which was true i didn't really have a need for people taking my blood every five hours we were waiting for the psychiatrist and it was a sunday so people had been telling us the psychiatrist there was no psychiatrist or he was busy to give me like one last checkup on my not my physical well-being because the doctors had already signed off on that but like my mental well-being to make sure that i wasn't a harm to myself and others anymore so they could release me and so he saw me and he was like she's clearly back to normal being wheeled on my wheelchair i couldn't walk at that point on my wheelchair out the hospital i freaking felt so cool i was like back to home not in the hospital anymore like so like optimistic which is so great for me like love that for me my grandma stayed with me I was constantly being watched like I was like putting on my story like I was at the beach but people really didn't know what like people were asking me if I was okay but like I was kind of making jokes about it which is not good but that's just how I deal that's just how I cope with things like this like when someone asks you if you're you're okay and something like this happened to you you really can't tell them what went on without like them being really confused so I was just like yeah I'm fine I got a concussion my head bled my I had a brain injury like what the frick are you supposed to tell people so I was resting all day for the most part doing normal-ish things but I my it hurt to walk my body was so tired and I had bruises all over my body I'll insert a picture on the screen of all the bruises I had my muscles were terribly sore but that was just like my physical muscles my brain muscles were also not doing as well either because I was having constant migraines I was on medication but I could only have Tylenol because of the brain bleed you can't have like Advil because that's not good for brain bleed. I, every time I got up, this still kind of happens if I'm not resting a lot, but every time I got up, I got extremely dizzy. Like if I just were to get up like this, I would like my whole world would just like spin. The recovery part of it has probably been the hardest thing because I've had to process what went on and it's really hard for someone to process when something like this goes on in one's life. And I've also had to have a lot of faith, like the universe, God, um, I really don't care about labels just like having faith and everything's gonna be okay And like this is just a small like this is just something that happened in my life at the end of the day I'm blessed to be alive, but schoolwork my my doctor said that would be idealistic to return to school return to college because i'm college like i take college classes so to return to school next semester which i had no idea that it was that serious and right now i'm working with my disabilities department at my school so i can try to finish school up it's hard to like explain to other people because i feel like yes my brain like my brain did bleed but it's been both like mental pain and physical pain like getting feeling nausea not wanting to eat like that's just i've never had to deal with that and well i actually have had a concussion before from gymnastics but it has not been this bad and plus i have the pain of my head 
injury. I literally don't know what to do with my life. So I've been channeling my energy making a lot of videos. I have taken on an editor on my team. That's why I've been active on social media. Like social media at the end of the day, like it's my job technically for me. And there's deadlines that I have things that I need to do and I need to get back to normal life. So about a week is when I started kind of processing things which was not the easiest i was very sad i still kind of get sad at points because to have like limitations on what you can do and i know that's a part of the healing process but again i'm a very busy person so when life comes in and just puts everything on pause it makes you slow down and recognize how grateful I am for the life and the things that I do have so like when your life is threatened to the point where like it's very scary it shakes up your whole world and I've had to have so much faith in life more than I ever had before shout out to my trusting the universe video if you're struggling with that too please watch that all of my spiritual practices and everything that I do like meditation like journaling all those things and I mentioned that on my channel specifically for you guys so that if you're going through something it will help you because it helps me being able to put myself first and recognizing that something huge did happen and it's I'm gonna need to learn coping methods and like when I have anxiety another time I'm not gonna let this experience completely ruin my outlook that I have on how beautiful life is and I don't think I will I can ever let anything in life phase me to the point where I fail to see the beauty that life always has to offer I'll continue to keep you guys updated and you aren't already I would encourage you to follow me on my Instagram my Twitter my snapchat because I am trying my best to be honest with you and how I'm doing. I kind of owe it to you guys. You guys are like my family. My doctor that took the staples out of my head did mention that I have serotonin syndrome, which is why I had an adverse effect to this drug. So I'm going to have to stay extra careful anytime a doctor prescribes me something. I need to take care of myself. I can't just push myself just because I think life is too fast and I need to constantly be running to my next goal I just need to like slow it down and maybe that's a message that maybe some of you guys can take with you is first of all please be mindful about prescription drugs prioritize your mental health I feel like mental health is at the root of absolutely everything if you don't slow down and take a deep breath and realize how grateful you are for life there may be a situation that presents itself that forces you to slow down if you've ever had an experience like this, maybe you feel like, oh wow, she's gone through that too. Like I thought it was just a YouTuber I watched. I think I still really like life and I still really love and enjoy the beauty of it. So you don't have to feel bad for me. I know this experience was here so I could grow. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you want to, you can subscribe, of course. I love to have you part of my family. This really isn't a typical video for my channel if this is the first one you're seeing. Be grateful for being alive because it's such a blessing in and of itself. So, bye. I got so much back, I think I'm never running out, yeah Bust me down a little bitch, I don't do this for no clout, hey I got so much back, I think